Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. On this channel in the past we have looked at the creation, background and history of various different characters from the Street Fighter universe, including most recently looking at the interesting story of Fi Long. In today's episode I am going to provide deep dive coverage on yet another one of Super Street Fighter 2's new challenges, this time examining the Jamaican kickboxer known as DJ. When it comes to Street Fighter 2 roster members, DJ may perhaps be one of the most overlooked and least talked about fighters of the bunch. But what is equally as interesting is that DJ was nearly not included in the game at all. Which begs the question, was adding DJ to the most iconic roster of fighting game characters of all time a mistake? Well, there's more to this story than meets the ears, so let's find out. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the unique tale of DJ. Yeah. 1993 was an exciting year to be a Street Fighter fan. Not only were we set to receive a new edition of the popular game for Capcom's snazzier System 2 arcade board hardware, but we were set to receive a version of a game that would contain four exciting new characters. What may come as a surprise to you to learn today is that the original four planned fighters who were set to be included in the game were not all the same ones that would make the final Super Street Fighter 2 release. Kami and T-Hawk had always been on the table, but the additional two new slots were set to be allocated to two fighters who Capcom would later choose to cut from the game. The cancelled new challengers would be a set of twin martial artists from Hong Kong, whose look and fighting styles would both be based around Bruce Lee. While never surfacing in Street Fighter 2, interestingly these lads would be left on the cutting room floor until the emergence of Street Fighter 3 in 1997. And although the Street Fighter 3 games were not given much love at the time, they have attracted a cult following today. The Lee brothers, known as Yun and Yang, are amongst the most beloved and popular of the new generation of combatants, so there is a strong chance that these two would have been embraced by the Street Fighter 2 fandom back in the day. So why were these two not included you may ask? Well, this is where our star of today's topic DJ comes into play. A character who was obviously not intended to be in the game as Capcom already had four new fighters commissioned for the title. So what would change? The answer to this question lies with a man known as James Goddard, a gentleman who has been talked about in depth recently on my wife's channel Lady Decade, when she covered the existence of Street Fighter 2 Rainbow Edition. Rainbow Edition was a quirky, glitchy as hell Taiwanese bootleg of Street Fighter 2 that allowed players to throw multiple fireballs, switch who they played as mid-match, as well as do loads of other strange things. This insanity to some degree managed to overshadow the official reiteration of the game, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, a title that Goddard had worked on tirelessly as a co-lead designer. This would lead to him scrutinising Rainbow Edition and surmising that the main thing that made it so fun was its speed, and that playing his version of the game after made it feel like he was playing Street Fighter underwater. This would lead to him working with Capcom in Japan on Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, which looked to improve on the game's speed. A task that he was met with great resistance with, as the Japanese team claimed they had already done all the correct research to ensure that the speed of the original was perfect in order to give players time to think about inputs of moves properly. They almost seemed offended by his proposal. In fact, some in the company would go as far as to discredit his idea based on the grounds that he was thinking from an American consumer's perspective, claiming American gamers have short attention spans and may appreciate an increase in speed. However, Capcom would be alienating their Japanese fan base by offering up a faster game that mechanically made less sense. To Goddard's delight though, the Japanese developers were quickly forced to eat humble pie, as hyperfighting not only proved hugely popular with Western audiences, but the Japanese public ate it up too, all in all improving Goddard's standing within Capcom and influence over the Street Fighter franchise overall. Cycling back round to our topic today, this would mean that Goddard would get to have input when it came to selecting the new challengers for Super Street Fighter 2. 
Goddard would look at the four proposed characters for the next iteration of the game, and would conclude that he felt it would be redundant to include a pair of twins in the game who utilise exactly the same fighting style. Therefore, new characters should be created for the game. The first of these would of course be Fi Long, a character who would evolve from the two fighters who were canned from the title. As for the final addition to the lineup, Goddard felt something fresh was needed. After the team asked for his suggestion, he stated, and I quote, a really kick-ass black character would be awesome. Going on to state that when it came to Japanese game development at the time, black characters were usually cast in negative roles. The boxer from the previous game, for example, had been positioned as a cheating, dirty fighter who had aligned himself with an evil dictator and crime syndicate. DJ, on the other hand, would be positioned as a franchise hero. In Super Street Fighter 2, the man appears with a large muscular physique who wears orange loose draw drawstring pants with black sides and yellowish white lettering that reads Maximum and orange sparring gloves. DJ's babyface persona would be put over strong, with the Jamaican kickboxer appearing in the games as kind spirited, cheerful, and happy go lucky. Well, as well as someone can appear who carries those traits whilst beating the crap out of others. Basically, despite the situation, DJ is rarely seen without a smile on his face, which is further illustrated through the character's in game poses, artwork, and pictures. Like many characters who have been conceived of the Street Fighter universe, inspiration would, as usual, be taken from the real world. In DJ's case, inspiration was taken from Billy Blanks, an American fitness personality, martial artist, actor, and creator of his own exercise program. His particular look and build for the game was directly inspired by Blanks' character in the 1999 movie, The King of the Kickboxers, who Goddard considered to look like a badass. He began designing DJ by drawing a sketch of him and sending it to the Japanese team, but to give them further context, he would also send them a copy of The King of Kickboxers in the post. Speaking of Billy Blanks, back in 1976, he had developed a routine that combined dance with elements from his martial arts and boxing training to form a unique workout regimen. Pairing all of these elements together, DJ would be born as a fun-loving fighter who was trying to jumpstart a music career. Upon his debut in Street Fighter 2, DJ would enter the Second World Warrior Tournament, hoping to find new rhythm for his next album, leading to him crossing swords with some of the most iconic fighting game characters in history. In terms of his in-game fighting style, I have seen others in the past loosely comparing him to that of Guile, in that he is a charge character who has a good variety of defensive options up his sleeve. The breakdancing kickboxer, though, of course, has his own unique attacks on offer, such as the double rolling sobat that allows him to approach opponents, which discourages ground based counters, or more notably, his jackknife maximum and machine gun upper, which are perfect anti air maneuvers. In Super Street Fighter 2, if players are able to defeat M. Bison and win the World Warrior Tournament, then his ending reveals that he managed to find the rhythm he was looking for, enabling him to deliver a smash hit album and in the process becoming a world famous recording artist. In the first half of the 90s, Street Fighter was a cultural phenomenon, which would by 1994 lead to a live action movie, whereby fans of the franchise would get to see DJ portrayed on the big screen. Rather than hire Billy Blanks, which I guess would have made too much sense, DJ would be portrayed by Miguel A. Nunez Jr. The writers of the movie for some reason decided to make the strange choice of redeciding who would be good guys and made bad guys in the movie, with Balrog being made a babyface and Zangief and DJ being made Shadaloo bad guys. This seemingly different character from the game is now one of Bison's minions, who now is a greedy computer hacker, for some absurd reason, although he amusingly admits he should never have taken the job role, because at one point he utters, oh mon, I should have stayed at Microsoft. Bill Gates' former henchman DJ is portrayed as a competent underling in the movie, but when he notices that Bison is going to lose the war, he flees his base stealing all of Bison's money. Sadly for DJ though, he quickly learns that with Shadaloo falling, 
that bison dollars are as worthless as the Russian ruble, leading to him telling Zangief that bison had just used them to rise to power in the criminal underworld. This results in one of the more comical moments in the film, with Zangief becoming enraged over learning that DJ was being paid, whereas he was working for nothing. This incarnation of DJ would obviously live on in video game form through the Street Fighter movie video games, further encapsulating this quirky chunk of history. That same year would also see the release of a Street Fighter 2 animated movie in Japan. While DJ was barely in the movie, at least his character and likeness was more in line with his identity that had been established in Super Street Fighter 2. In this one, he beats up a few punks causing trouble at a nightclub before being warned by Guile and Chun-Li that he is being monitored by Shadaloo, which he does not believe until Chun-Li destroys one of their cyborgs in front of him. One notable difference though between this movie and the game is that in the English dub, he is portrayed to have an African-American accent, though obviously in the game he is said to be Jamaican. He would also be a part of the American cartoon series that would function as a loose spin-off of the live-action movie. With this one though, they did have enough sense to switch DJ and Balrog back into their correct hero and villain roles. Although rather lazily, they would make Balrog the computer hacker this time. DJ is portrayed as a friendly and capable fighter in this one, serving as the team's helicopter pilot. While moving into the second half of a decade, while the Street Fighter franchise would be expanded, the DJ character that was in part created by James Goddard was nowhere to be seen. The arcade would see a trilogy of Street Fighter Alpha games, 3D polygonal Street Fighter EX games, the Street Fighter 3 games, and Marvel Capcom crossover fighters. But DJ wasn't in any of them. The Japanese team appeared to have moved on and now had included twin martial artists Yun and Yang within the Street Fighter 3 games, the characters they had originally wanted to support within the Street Fighter universe anyway. While this was the case, when Street Fighter Alpha 3 was ported to the Sony PlayStation, DJ along with the other missing Street Fighter 2 roster members would finally be added to Alpha 3 which meant that DJ's backstory would be fleshed out beyond the events of Just Street Fighter 2. Alpha 3 occurs prior to the events of SF2, and DJ is depicted as a cheerful kickboxer who has already risen to the top of his division, so is now travelling the world looking for new challenges. Throughout the events of the game, he challenges and defeats Aiden, in the process discovering a new true purpose in life, finding and defeating Sagat. The so-called Emperor of Mai Tai. DJ soon learns though that Sagat has fallen from grace and now works for M. Bison, with Sagat refusing to take DJ seriously. Still they fight and DJ is victorious, making Sagat more depressed and twisted in the process. This victory catches the attention of M. Bison himself, who wants DJ for Shadaloo. Rather than becoming his personal computer hacker, DJ refuses, so M. Bison tries to kill him but the skilled kickboxer manages to fend him off. DJ ends up returning to Jamaica with his adventures inspiring him to make new music. In 2002, Alpha 3 Max would be released for the Game Boy Advance, a version of a game that would add three more characters to the mix, including the popular Yun from Street Fighter 3. This is relevant as the game sees Yun's story involving Yang, meeting DJ on a quest to find the whereabouts of V Long a storyline that brings the four characters who contested against one another for Super Street Fighter 2 roster spots into the same game for the first time. Past this point, we would see nothing of DJ for many years, with him not resurfacing until the Street Fighter 4 games, but at least we would get to learn a little bit about what became of the character after the events of Street Fighter 2 and the Second World Warrior Tournament. Following on from his days of becoming a musical sensation, it was only a matter of time until the athlete began to feel restless, with the urge to compete in combat creeping back into his life. This would lead to him deciding to take a break from his music career to test his fighting capabilities once more, entering the Sin tournament in the process. This marks the first time in a video game where the character is provided with a voice actor, with DJ now speaking with a strong, thick Jamaican accent. There is no additional character development really given to DJ for this comeback, 
and planners him just sees him dancing and having a good time during battles. But I guess his happy-go-lucky attitude is a breath of fresh air in comparison to the ultra-serious tone that many other characters in the game and their arcs contain. While not adding much to Street Fighter 4 in terms of story, it is of note though that he is one of only two characters in these games who is capable of cancelling a super combo into an ultra combo, so at least he has that cool trick up his sleeve. Sadly past this point, that was the last we got to see of the character, bar him showing up in the remakes of Street Fighter 2. While James Goddard felt that DJ was a great addition to the Street Fighter lineup that was intended to make the roster more diverse, Capcom clearly did not seem to be as high on this character. After all, Yun and Yang, two characters who are virtually identical, have continued to show up more regularly in Street Fighter games, despite the fact that Fi Long was designed to replace them. They have been a part of the Street Fighter 3 games, the 4 games, the Alpha games, and even Capcom vs SNK2 and Capcom Fighting Evolution. The Japanese development team clearly prefer the Kung Fu Brothers over the kickboxing Jamaican. So does that mean cancelling Yun and Yang from Super Street Fighter 2 in favour of DJ was a big mistake, as the more popular characters were left out? Well personally I think no, as if we were to get a game with four new characters with two of them being nearly identical, I think James Goddard was right. That would have been a far less attractive option to consumers, even if Capcom today seemed to massively prefer the Lees over Fi Long and DJ. James Goddard had positive intentions when adding DJ to Super Street Fighter 2, even if Capcom have not done much to build on or capitalise on the character in the years that were to come. Despite this, there is no denying that DJ certainly diversified the Street Fighter 2 roster and gave new challenger players an extra reason to be excited ahead of the game's release. Other fighters may have overshadowed him in the years to come, but I think that DJ was positioned very well back in 1993. This character was certainly no mistake and will forever hold a place in history as one of the iconic roster members who appeared in the legendary Street Fighter 2 games. Yeah! So ladies and gentlemen, that was the history of DJ, one of Super Street Fighter 2's new challengers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know which Street Fighter character you would like me to cover next. And if you are new here, be sure to check out one of my dozens of Street Fighter character retrospectives that I have already uploaded to this channel. Videos like this are in part made possible due to the generous people who back this channel on Patreon. Speaking of which, special shout outs go out to A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Senior, Ryan Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Azurakai, Dropkin Varela, Mike Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Azana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of Ateo, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs SNK, Homes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang Hee, Norma Styx, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Rene, Marina Liga, TOG Driver, Luis Viant, John Bates, David Bell, Chris Fix, Risk67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs what I do on Patreon. Thank you for allowing me to make obscure content like this. It's much appreciated. Cheers. Cheerio.